Hey guys, Sean here from visibledark.ca. Welcome to another video. Uh, tonight I'm going to be collecting some data on NGC 7822, which is a young star forming region in the constellation of Cepheus. Um, it actually encompasses uh, Sharpless 171 as well. We're going to get some really good, nice data on this, uh, really good stuff. Uh, it's got a good mix of H alpha, O3, and S2. And tonight I have set up the Moravian. Uh, G3 16200 EC uh, CCD camera. Inside it, um, I've got um, the H alpha filter, uh, O3 filter, and S2 filter. These, um, so we're shooting the Hubble palette, and um, these filters were sent to me by Optolong, a uh, great company to work with, uh, fantastic products. The filters always work fabulous. These are the latest, greatest uh, uh, narrowband filters and um, I'm looking forward to uh, trying them out. We're also going to be processing this data together. Uh, I'm going to take you uh, behind the scenes and we're going to go into Pixinsight and we're going to uh, load this data up when I have enough of it and um, hopefully that'll be uh, soon. We got some uh, good nights happening recently and uh, tonight looks like it's probably going to be another good night where I can go all night on the, on the target. This will be the first night for NGC 7822 see how many hours I can get. Um, if it's enough that I think I can work with it and run you through some of the processing and picks in sight, um, I will certainly do that. Okay, so we have SGP opened and uh, I'm currently doing some darks and uh, get those dark frames uh, done, get a few of them. Uh, I will be shooting 10 minute subs tonight. So I am doing uh, 10 minute uh, dark 600 seconds and uh, we're currently on frame 5 uh, this is the dark here and um, I've got uh, everything else uh, already set up for um, the uh, imaging tonight so uh, we're using the uh, the Moravian camera and filter wheel that's set up I got the Pegasus Astro Focus Cube um, going and uh, the uh, the EQ6 will be uh, connected uh, shortly and we'll get that uh, functioning uh, and I have the uh, I have yet to set uh, for NGC uh, 7822 the uh, the run, um, so we're going to do light frames and we're going to use the H alpha filter, and the suffix will be H A. We are going to do 10 minute exposures, uh, binned one by one, and we're going to repeat that. Um, I'm just going to put in a lofty number of 100 here uh, because I might, I probably will end up shooting over multiple nights um, or at least a couple nights. So I'll see how much I can get uh, per night. Uh, we'll do the same here for the second, uh, second filter, which will be the O3. We'll run that and we'll do 10 minutes on that as well. And we'll take 100. And we'll do S2, and it will be, suffix will be S2. Put that in there because it's not in there currently. 10 minutes, uh, put it to 100, and uh, we are going to save that. And that's that. Um, SGP is ready to go, and we can, uh, we just have to wait for a dark to fall, and then we are off and running. And I have SGP doing a plate solve. It's uh, slewed to NGC uh, 7822 and is currently centering the scope on it. It did its first plate solve and that failed. It was uh, off and it's doing a correction. And now it is uh, indicated that uh, the plate solve was successful. I've gone back and adjusted the um, imaging run uh, so that I'm getting 18 10 minute images of each. Um, it's going to uh, finish, I want it to finish the entire events first. So it's gonna do all of the H alpha, and then it's gonna do all of the H3, and then it's gonna do all of the S2 overnight. Um, I feel more confident doing it that way with regards to focusing on that. It will uh, reduce the amount of times that um, the uh, 
the focusing has to be uh, the auto focusing has to be done um, so that will free up a bit of time for actually collecting data um, and it'll, it'll run a little faster um, I auto focused um, the filters uh, already I ran through that routine and uh, I noticed that um, they're almost pretty much par focal which was kind of interesting um, so I have them set as such and um, we'll see what happens over the course of the night. I've got it set to uh, autofocus on filter change and I've also told it to autofocus every 60 minutes. So um, hopefully that's effective in keeping things nice and uh, tight and sharp. So we'll start uh, getting the imaging going and collect the data and then we can look at the first sub once it comes in which will be an H-alpha uh, H sub and we can have a look at that and uh, go from there. Okay, the first 10 minute sub is about to come in. Uh, we've got about 15 seconds left uh, and then uh, it'll download from the camera which will take uh, another 24 seconds roughly uh, for the CCD. CCDs tend to be slower in uh, downloading the uh, data from the camera. Um, versus uh, the cooled CMOS cameras. That's one thing I like about the uh, the CMOS cameras is the download times from the camera is uh, very fast, actually uh, a few seconds, and uh, you've got the data um, as opposed to the CCD cameras, which uh, uh, take uh, significantly longer. But um, it's downloading it right now, so uh, we'll just wait for it to uh, pop up here and then we'll be able to have a look at our first 10 minute sub which was taken in H alpha of NGC 7822 and there we have it that's the first sub in looks absolutely fabulous I love it wow there's nothing like getting a nice sharp good detailed image look at the detail that's coming through here look at all this this is wonderful looking this is a really really nice shot this is going to be fabulous data. So it's going to continue on shooting H alpha for the next uh, 18 images. And then it'll switch over to O3. And then it'll switch over to S2. And it'll collect this data up until uh, dawn. And then I will have a nice uh, full set of data from the night that I'll be able to uh, bring into PixInsight and uh, do a quick process and have a look at what I got. Here's some of the uh, 03 data coming in. Um, we've uh, completed the uh, uh, H-alpha acquisition. We've got 18 subframes on it. Um, this is the 03 data coming in. We're at uh, frame 10. Uh, there might have been, it, it actually looks like everything is going really good and it looks like the sky is good. Um, I did notice though in uh, frame 8 uh, what appeared to be maybe some high cloud um, somewhere in 7, 8, and 9, but it looked like 8 was largely affected by it. So I did mark that one bad. Um, but uh, overall, everything is going really well, and we're getting some great uh, uh, data in the uh, H-alpha 03 and S2. Uh, S2 will come uh, after the 03. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to complete the S2 uh, tonight. It doesn't look like um, things are progressing uh, quick enough, so... Uh, I might have to uh, follow up with uh, some acquisition on the next clear night for the S2 data, but um, certainly everything, I'm, I'm very pleased with everything that uh, that's coming in so far. It looks great and uh, should be nice uh, to work with in PixInsight when we get there. Okay, folks, we are in PixInsight, and uh, we're going to process the uh, NGC 7822. Um, this is the uh, H-alpha data that I got on it. This is the Oxygen-3 data and the Sulfur-2 data. So we are going to, first of all, uh, these images uh, or these... Uh, these unstretched masters, um, they've all been uh, calibrated and um, they've been um, cropped and uh, DBE has been applied to them. Um, that's something that I, I'm not covering in this processing uh, video, uh, but I do have uh, 
uh, other videos that cover the uh, the uh, um, how I do dynamic background extraction and uh, cropping and, and so forth. So and also uh, calibrating um, the uh, the uh, raw data uh, to produce your uh, your unstretched masters. Okay, so moving along, um, we've got our data here. Uh, the first thing we want to do is combine it. So we're going to go to color spaces, channel combination. We're going to leave it set at RGB, and we want to uh, put uh, for the blue. We want to use the uh, the oxygen three, O three. So we can just drag it over there for the H alpha. Uh, we're going to drop it into the green channel, and for the sulfur two, we're going to use that for the red channel. And now we will apply that and we get our combined image which is going to look like this extremely green and that's uh, it's largely due to the uh, H alpha influence uh, in the image uh, which is overpowering um, a lot of the the uh, sulfur 2 and the oxygen 3 which uh, is not as dominant in this in this uh, region of space um, I'm just going to move these masters off to the side here so they're out of our way. And we're going to fix all this. Uh, this is going to turn into a nice uh, Hubble palette image when it's done. So we've got the channels combined. And the next thing that we're going to want to do is a uh, color calibration. Um, Color calibration kind of works a little different on Hubble palette images, but it's still something that I find um, is needed and uh, can be beneficial. Um, so if we go over here to the uh, color calibration, what I'm going to do is select, uh, I know this is, this star here is a dominantly white star. So we'll use that as the white reference and I'm going to use uh, background references. Uh, I'm going to use a small area here of background space and we'll just put another one right next to it. So I've got preview one for the white reference. I got previous two for the background reference and previous three is going to be our region of interest and we're going to pull that up as such. Uh, this is image 24 so there we got image 24 for preview 03. Uh, the next thing we're going to want to do is get these set up. So image 24, preview 1, that's this area here for the white reference. And image 24, preview 2, which is up here for the background reference. We're going to leave structure detection on so that it looks at the stars for its color balancing. And we will click, or we'll just apply that, and we'll let PixInsight do a little bit of work there and that is completed now it doesn't look like much was done but it actually did do um, some changes there and what we're going to do is apply a different STF uh, a, a different stretch uh, to to each RGB channels uh, in, in an unlinked mode which is control click so we're going to control click and you're going to see it the color balance did have an effect on it now the next thing we want to do is a linear noise reduction i'm going to skip the deconvolution deconvolution is is often uh, best done uh, before you stretch your image uh, but i found um, just by some experimentations with this particular image here that if I do the decon after I stretch it, um, I get a, a pretty good result um, using some of the standard uh, uh, settings for deconvolution. So I'm just going to do it that way. We're going to skip, skip the deconvolution right now. We're going to go straight to the linear noise reduction. And the linear noise reduction, again, I have a video that covers this, um, goes a little more you know, in depth on it. So I'm not going to get too involved. So let's apply the uh, linear transform the, the linear noise reduction using the multi-scale linear transform tool and we first thing we want to do is turn off the the uh, the uh, uh, stretch on the image and we want to enable preview um, or real-time preview I should say just so we don't confuse it with the preview um, uh, 
the previews that are on the image already. Uh, so the real-time preview mode is enabled, and we can see that um, anything that's, uh, that's black, so these stars and that, that's uh, protected, and anything that's white um, reveals, so it will be affected by the noise reduction. And this is, this is fairly decent for what we want. We want some of the noise reduction to occur uh, in the nebulosity itself, um, uh, to to smooth out um, some of the uh, the noise that is present. It's not a lot of noise, but it's still there. And uh, so we're going to do that by um, just applying these settings that I've got set here already for the multi-scale linear transform. And again, I've got a, a video that covers multi-scale linear transform for noise reduction. You can check that out. It goes into more details. I'm not going to go into all the details of, of the settings and, and uh, what they are. I'll uh, leave it up to you to look at that other video if you want to check that out. Um, so this looks fine to me. We're just going to use it. I'm going to... Uh, have to disable the preview mask now though so I'm just going to close the the real-time preview I'm going to disable this now that the the mask is generated the linear mask is generated for the image and I'm going to enable the uh, automatic stretch and I'm going to go to preview 4 here so I can see uh, so I can test the noise reduction, just make sure I'm, I'm getting what I want. Um, so I'm going to just drag and, and apply that noise reduction to preview 4. We'll let PixInsight do its thing. could almost use the Jeopardy tune here. It's almost done. It's almost there. Depending on your uh, computer system, it'll be faster or slower. Uh, mine's sort of a in-between system. It's not uh, not the fastest, but it's not the slowest out there either. So, um, picks in sight. Uh, depending on the operation, can take some time for itself to work through. So there we have the uh, noise reduction. Now I'm using, I'm I'm holding Control Shift and pressing z the uh, Z key or Z, uh, depending where you're from, and um, that allows me to see a before and an after. That function, the control shift Z, um, only works in preview windows. It does not work on a full image window, uh, such as this here. So only, only in these preview windows will it work. So we can see the noise before, and we can see the result of applying the linear noise reduction using the multi-scale linear transform tool and uh, it's pretty good I like it it's not so bad um, it may have added a little bit extra ringing around the stars here those are pretty small stars those in the grand scheme of things um, I'm zoomed in quite heavily here um, so uh, you can't really look at an image uh, in that sense uh, that close up it just isn't realistic that's not how it's supposed to be viewed and that's not how it should be viewed um, so I'm not going to be overly concerned about that if I was though I could go back and try adjusting the uh, preview mask a little more and I could do that by just returning to the real-time preview and uh, trying to um, protect the uh, the stars a bit more We'll see if uh, increasing this value of the amplification can uh, help in getting a little more. And it does. It increases the protection of the stars. It also increases uh, the protection of some of the nebulosity. But it's still allowing some of the noise reduction to apply. As you can see, it's not black. So it's not, it's not fully protected. But it is applying a little bit more protection to it. That may not be uh, a bad thing. It helped preserve some more details that uh, the noise reduction can smooth over a bit. Um, but again, this is stuff that you're only going to notice if you're zoomed in on extreme levels and um, uh, the, the images are not meant to be viewed at that aspect ratio, so at that scale, so um, that's really irrelevant to, to me anyways. But we'll use this mask, uh, so we've adjusted the mask slightly, we'll turn off the preview and we can turn back on the stretch for the image and we'll go to the real-time preview again. 
Um, actually, sorry, not the real-time preview. We're going to go to preview number four, and we're going to apply the multi-scale linear transform noise reduction. And once again, we're going to wait for the uh, computer and PixInsight to do its thing. It was a lot faster because it's already done the calculations. Um, so that uh, helps certainly when you're uh, making adjustments, uh, makes things go a little faster. So we've got uh, we got a little better little better protection on the stars now. Not quite as not quite as severe. And uh, I think that's uh, pretty decent. Again, those are really small stars that I'm zoomed in on, so I'm not overly uh, overly concerned about that. Um, as you can see here, if we uh, zoom into if we zoom out to a more proper um, uh, zoom level uh, aspect, then um, uh, the noise reduction looks uh, really nice. So let's apply that to our image. This should go pretty quick too because the calculation is already done and it did. Okay, so we've got the uh, noise reduction out of the way. The next thing we're going to want to do is turn off the stretch and we're going to want to manually stretch this using the histogram um, transformation tool. We'll turn on a real, real uh, time preview so we can see what we're doing. RGB slash K is selected. And we're just going to grab the middle slider and move it to the left. Okay, and we're just going to reset that. And we're going to move the middle slider to the left again. And this will be like a, a gray point. This is a white point. And we're going to, this is the black, so we're going to move the black point to the right. Um, we don't want to clip anything, so we're just going to move it over. We still got a little bit of uh, shelf space there. And I'm going to adjust the middle slider again to the right just to bring up some of the detail. And that's looking not too shabby. Okay, so that's pretty decent. So we're going to close that off. We'll close off the real time preview. And we can, at this point, apply, we can skip the uh, TGV noise, uh, denoise uh, tool for now. We're going to come back to it. Uh, we can apply SCNR uh, green, and we'll apply that to the image to remove this uh, green cast that is present in the image. And as you can see, um, the... Hubble palette colors are now starting to reveal themselves. Uh, it's looking uh, looking very nice. And um, we can close that off. And I think what I will do next is some deconvolution before I apply the TGV denoise. Um, I have a feeling that the deconvolution is going to uh, produce, uh, make a little bit of high frequency noise more, more, um, more visible, and we might need to uh, smooth that over slightly. Um, so let's give that a try. I'm just looking at the preview four here just to get an idea of uh, how sharp things are, and also the noise. There's, I'm not sure if you can see it in the video so much, but there is some high frequency noise here, and the TGV uh, denoise is good at uh, removing that if you use the right masks um, in in conjunction with the tool. And um, I'll show you uh, how that's done when I do this. So let's go back to uh, image 24 which is our primary image and we are going to open the deconvolution tool. Now I discovered for this particular image here that, um, I'll go back to preview four, I discovered uh, I'll just do 20 for now just to do a little test. I'm going to take that off. Um, this actually works not so bad um, with the standard settings, the default settings for the most part. The only thing I did was I adjusted the de-ringing to 450 here, but if I apply this, um, it actually produces a fairly decent result for deconvolution and uh, certainly is a lot quicker than um, 
uh, doing the external PSF. Uh, but that's not to say the external PSF routine uh, isn't uh, good because it is. It's a, it's a superior way of doing it. You probably get better results, but it's also more tedious to do it that way and um, not necessarily... Um, not necessarily going to produce that much more of a difference uh, than what I'm getting here with the uh, parametric uh, PSF in the default settings. As you can see, I'm doing a, uh, a before and an after, uh, before, after, and it actually sharpens things up pretty nice. Um, we can see here with these uh, pillars that uh, exist in NGC 7822, you can see how it sharpens things quite nice. It's also sharpening some of the high um, frequency noise, though. And you might be able to see that a little better now, that uh, that pattern that's producing uh, itself that's becoming visible. It's smooth here, but it's a little more evident here. Um, so we want to remove that um, high frequency noise, and we can do that. First thing that we're going to do, though, is apply this uh, deconvolution to the image itself. PixInsight is going to take a little bit, uh, take a minute here to, to go through each iteration. I've got it set for 20 iterations. I could hit it again uh, to even improve more. But like I said, um, when I was doing the... Um, when I was doing the uh, linear noise reduction, uh, zooming in, um, the images are not supposed to be viewed at 400% or 800% zoom level. Um, that's just not correct. And uh, we want to view a, an image at 100% and um, get the whole, uh, get the full impact of the, uh, the image as it was designed to be uh, viewed. So um, if I apply deconvolution again and, and zoom in and look, I'm probably going to see some imperfections starting to produce, uh, probably starting to appear, which I don't want. And I don't think that it's necessary to um, increase the deconvolution, the iterations, or or hit it again, hit the image again with another round of deconvolution because I actually like uh, what I'm seeing already um, and I don't want to overdo things. So we'll just let uh, PixInsight run its course here. It's at 9 of 20, and I will just uh, fast forward this so that we get to uh, 20 and uh, we can continue on. Okay, so uh, deconvolution is done on the image, and uh, we've got some uh, increased uh, resolution occurring, as you can see. Some of the nice uh, details are a little more dramatic in the image. So I like how this is looking. Uh, we can close off deconvolution now because we're done with it. And the next step that we are going to move on to is uh, creating some range masks. Um, specifically, I want to control some of the corner information that's occurring. Um, it looks like the outer corner, a little, little bit of a, a purple hue occurring there and I think if I uh, reduce the saturation on those um, those corners I can get rid of some of that that purple uh, appearance um, I could also just crop it too because I mean it is a it is a nice image and uh, that is an alternative um, and if I did crop it I would still produce some some masks though just to uh, be able to do some more color saturation and some uh, contrast boosting of uh, the uh, the nebula and uh, the uh, different colors occurring in it. Um, I might actually just crop it. Um, it is a it is a nice wide field, but I think that by being too far, uh, we'll say zoomed out uh, too far. I think that we're missing a lot of the uh, the good detail that's in this. Nebula. Um, I seem to like this sort of crop um, largely because it um, it still shows some of the the dust that's surrounding um, the nebula itself, uh, which is kind of cool, I think. So let me make a duplicate, a clone that I can actually work with here, 
to um, do a crop on just so I have a backup image. Um, I'm just uh, making some adjustments here on how I want to crop it and okay so then let's uh, do go to geometry and dynamic crop and I will just crop this out and what I've done is just eliminated the corners that uh, like I said I wasn't quite thrilled with um, they look like they need some adjustment there and uh, I could do some range mask and, and, and fix that with desaturating it and, uh, so that I get rid of that purple hue um, but um, like I said the nebula itself the details within it are, are quite uh, nice so uh, being a little uh, zoomed in on it like this uh, a crop that uh, reveals more of that uh, fine detail is uh, of interest uh, to me and I think justifies uh, um, doing the crop. So now that we got it cropped, uh, let's do, we're going to do one hit of saturation. Now you can use the color saturation tool or you can use the curves tool and select saturation. Um, both will work in this case and we'll turn on the real-time preview and we'll just give this a, a little bit of a boost as we can see here. We're starting to get more of the uh, oxygen 3 and the H alpha starting to pop more H alpha sulfur 2 uh, starting to to pop in terms of its color and we can see the difference that it's made here so I like the uh, the color saturation that we've got going on here I don't want to necessarily overdo the background saturation um, and uh, overdo it on the stars uh, in the background this is actually fairly decent. We could test it out and just see what uh, what we get by giving it a, another another round of of a light saturation, so we can boost things a little bit. Um, that's not so bad. Okay, we'll we'll leave it at that. We gave it another round. Now we're not done yet. We still want to make this pop a little more, and I think that we can uh, adjust the. Uh, the, the 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 saturation a little more for the nebula so let's do a um, uh, make a range mask it will go to mass generation and we will produce a range mask we'll reset it uh, we'll set our smoothness at 100 open our real-time preview window and it's going to be white when you first open it until you move the lower limit slider and as you move the lower limit slider you'll start to see how it starts to produce your range mask for you so now we want to concentrate largely on the nebula region not so much the background so the black is protecting the background while we're leaving this uh, this open um, to being uh, for us to be able to work on it um, affect it and uh, it might take a, a few adjustments to get it sort of how you want it. Um, I'm going to give this a try just to see how it looks and how it fits with uh, what I'm doing here, what I want to achieve anyways. And we're going to apply it. And that's not terrible actually. That's going to allow me to pop some of that off. Now I might want to keep some more of the nebula in mind up here so let me go back again to the range mask and we'll just try and grab a little more area and we'll see what this looks like once we apply it uh, just turn that off and I'll move that out of the way here over a little bit and give it the old drop on there. Okay, now I'm getting more of this region here, but I'm also getting some of the background. So um, I'm going to need to probably go somewhere in between these two masks. So let me go back to the range selection, and I'm going to just adjust this ever so slightly and we'll produce this 
uh, this range mask and see how it fits. That's a little better. I'm still losing some of the uh, detail up here. Um, I could I could go and adjust the mask slightly um, using the paint tool. And I'm going to want to I'm going to want to work on this area to the side right here. So I want to affect this area here. So I probably want to uh, go to the paint uh, clone stamp and add some white area. And I'm just setting a, a, a point here for the clone stamp to work with. I got it set at max of 200. And I'm just going to add in the softness. I could actually probably, let me just reset that. I'm going to increase the softness before I apply that. And we'll just do this just to get some of this area here where the nebula is. So let's go back and have a look and see if we got it. Yeah, we did. We got it. So that's looking pretty good. So we've sort of done a good job in isolating the areas that we want to. Okay, so let's uh, boost the contrast on this a bit. We've got our mask made and it's already applied and we can see the um, the effect that's going to happen if we go to curves um, RGB and open our real-time preview window so we can see what's going on and we're going to give this some a bit of a contrast boost and you can see I don't want to overdo it obviously so we're just going to give it a, a little bit of a, a boost so things pop a little bit more and then we're going to apply that to the image and as you can see this mask has allowed us to increase the contrast of the nebula region the uh, H-alpha S2 region and the oxygen 3 area um, without affecting the background um, without adjusting that so it gives it a little better contrast now we can make some of this dark structure uh, pop a little bit more too. I have yet to get to the uh, TGV denoise, uh, which I could have done sooner, uh, but in this case here, uh, I'm doing later. It's not gonna make too much of a difference whether I do it sooner or later. So in fact, doing it later might be to my advantage because I can try and smooth out some of this high frequency noise that's appearing from doing the uh, color saturation and uh, uh, doing some of the uh, curves adjustments uh, to make things, uh, to pop things, uh, boost uh, contrast. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. That's uh, good. We're just going to put these range masks up out of the way here. And we're going to turn off the mask for now. Um, what we want to do next is apply that TGV denoise um, and get rid of some of this, I, I hope that you guys can see this, but you got the high frequency noise, a sort of a, a pattern to it, a blotchy pattern. We can smooth that quite a bit um, by using the TGV denoise. In order to use it though, um, we have to create two masks uh, to start with. And um, again, the, the TGV denoise is something that I cover in another video in more detail. You can check that video out uh, to learn uh, more about it. I'm not going to go into all the uh, all the particulars of TGV denoise. Um, I'm just going to uh, run through it to uh, apply to this image. So the first thing we need to do is ex um, do a uh, extract the uh, luminance lightness, I should say, uh, channel uh, from the image. So we end up with this, and we're going to duplicate it, and we're going to name the first one TGV mask. It's going to be applied to the image. This one here will be used as the support image. And I've already got one named that, so we'll just 
Okay, so there. Now I just added a lore uh, underscore to the end uh, because I already had a support mask uh, made in uh, another workspace. So, um, so we've got a mask that we're going to apply to the image and we've got a support image that's going to be used here for local support um, under this section here. So let's just grab this while we're in there. Uh, that is support with the underscore and the mask here we have to do a couple things to it in order to we, we want a low contrast mask um, we don't want a high contrast this is high contrast right now we don't want that uh, we want a very low contrast because we want to affect the the um, uh, the uh, high uh, frequency noise that exists in the image um, so in order to make this a low contrast mask, um, you need to apply, you can use the curves transformation and you need to apply it like this. So you see how I've got this set up going from the 25% to the 50%. And if you apply that, you'll see what it does to the image. And this is what we want. We want it to look like this. This is going to be a low contrast mask. The only other thing you have to do after that is go to your histogram transformation tool and you want to make sure that this image is selected. Um, and you're going to move the middle slider until this part of the histogram is over the 50% line here, the center line. So you'll see if you watch, you'll see I'm moving it and I'm positioning it so that it's sitting centered over the 50% on the histogram. Now we want to apply that as well. And this produces our low contrast mask, which is going to affect the high frequency noise that we saw. And we're going to want to apply that to our image and we can see that it's applied. We see how it's working and we're going to do a preview window so that we can see the effect that we're getting and we're going to apply the TGV denoise to the image. And Pix and Sight will take a little time to do TGV denoise. It, it'll be quicker on small preview windows like this. Um, but when you apply it to the whole image, it's going to take some time. It's very uh, CPU intensive. And uh, you might have to walk away from the computer for a few minutes or grab a coffee or something and then come back. Um, okay, so you can see, hopefully you can see the difference that it's making. So all this blotchy high frequency noise, it's being smoothed out at this point. And the stars aren't being affected, which is good because we don't want the stars affected. We just want the background noise to be affected. Um, we don't want to overdo the denoising um, because then you make your images look more plastic-like. Um, and that's not, not, what we're, not what we're aiming for. And again, I'm zoomed in here 800%, 1000%. Um, this is not how you look at an image. So... Um, you know, when you when you're zoomed out from it, it's going to look fabulous, and that little bit of uh, noise reduction that we're doing is just going to help the image that much more. So this looks pretty good for um, the TGV denoise. So I'm going to apply it to the entire image, and we will uh, come back in a minute or two. I'm going to fast forward actually, um, so it won't really be a minute or two. Uh, it'll be a minute or two for me, but for you, it'll be more instantaneous. I'm going to fast forward and we'll come to the end result of applying the TGV denoise to the image. Okay, the uh, TGV denoise is applied to our image and uh, it actually is looking pretty good. Okay, so we have our combined RGB H-Alpha 03 S2 image now. It's been processed. And we have one final thing that we want to do, which is add a luminance layer to it. Uh, we can do that. The luminance layer is going to give it a little more contrast and uh, um, a little more uh, uh, detail. Um, we can use the H-alpha layer 
uh, the H alpha image as our luminance. And what we need to do is um, we just need to process it a bit before we apply it. So the first thing that we're going to do with the H alpha image is uh, we're going to, um, well, let's stretch it first just to see what we're looking at. And we can see there's our H alpha image. Um, we're going to want to uh, boost the contrast on this and we can uh, sharpen this image. Um, we can uh, add some uh, noise reduction to it as well before we apply it to the RGB image. So the first thing we're going to do is some deconvolution on it real quick. And we're going to use um, the parametric PSF just to do this quickly. I'm going to use uh, iterations of 10 and I'm going to make a preview window here just so I can see how the deconvolution uh, is, is working, the settings that I'm using works before I apply it. I use 10 iterations just because it's quick. And um, as we can see, we need to make some adjustments. So I'm going to lower this down, the global dark, uh, down to uh, 0 0.0100 and reapply it to our preview. We'll let PixInsight uh, do its thing here. Okay, that's better. Now we can actually see, and this is, again, this is a very quick uh, deconvolution. Um, I'm not doing... Uh, an external PSF, which is a little more time consuming, but um, the results with this is uh, is still good. Um, there is a noticeable, not sure if you can see it in the video, but there is a, a noticeable difference. Um, things are a little tighter and a little more detailed. So we'll go with that. Maybe what we'll do is we'll bump that up to 20 um, and apply it to the H alpha image. So we're doing 20 iterations of the parametric PSF decon on this H alpha image that we're going to be that we're using for our luminance. And we'll just let PixInsight work through processing this deconvolution for us. Okay, so the decon is uh, finished and the next thing that we'll want to do to this uh, luminance layer that we're creating, um, we'll just uh, do some quick noise reduction on it and to do that, we'll use the multi-scale linear transform like we've done before. Um, we'll uh, open the real-time preview window here just to see. And that looks fine for the uh, linear mask that we'll be using um, to apply this noise reduction. So I'm going to, uh, I close that uh, real-time preview off. I'm gonna uncheck the preview mask because we want to, um, the mask is still present, obviously, but we, we want to be able to apply these settings to the image now. Uh, let's go back to the auto stretch so we can see what we're looking at. And we'll go to preview one and we'll just apply that noise reduction to the image. And this is all just preparing the H alpha image um, for a luminance uh, image uh, that we can apply to the RGB image that we've created. Okay, so now we want to do the histogram uh, stretch. Uh, we want to stretch the image. So we'll go back here to our histogram transformation tool and we'll just move that middle slider up a little bit. And we'll keep doing this just to bring out the details that we want. I'm going through this a little quickly um, and we'll just keep working on this a bit just to bring out the, more of the details and increase the contrast before we apply it. Okay, I'm going to switch over to curves just to give it a little bit of a contrast boost. Uh, so I'll drop, make a nice S shape here, turn on the real time preview, make an S shape here and we'll bring this up here just to give it a boost. Okay, that should be good. Um, the last thing that we're going to want to do then, this is prepared. This We've prepared the H alpha image as a luminance uh, 
image that we can apply, our luminance channel that we can apply to the RGB now. It's ready to be applied. So what we'll want to do is go to color spaces, LRG combined, and I've already got it uh, in there, but if we reset this so you can see what you'd be uh, looking at when you open this, um, you'd want to uncheck the uh, red, green, and the blue. Just leave the luminance active, and you can simply drag that over and drop it, and it'll select it as the luminance layer, the H alpha channel that we processed um, as the luminance layer. And we can go back to our RGB and apply that now. And there we have it. So we've just applied the uh, luminance to the RGB and it's brought up some of the details, uh, enhanced some of the details and the contrast. If we uh, do a, uh, if we go back, look at this. So this is with the luminance layer added. Uh, the only other thing that I would probably look at doing, I noticed that adding the luminance layer has reduced the uh, the dark structure detail a bit so if we went and uh, wanted to recapture the dark structure um, make it a little more uh, prominent uh, we can go to the dark structure enhance script um, I have it set at an amount of uh, 40 uh, it's not being applied full uh, one iteration and it's being applied to the RGB image obviously and we'll just let it do its job here and we should see these dark structures uh, be enhanced quite significantly okay so the uh, dark structure enhanced script is done if we look at uh, if we uh, go in here and just uh, have a look at this dark structure we can see that uh, before this is what it looked like this is before and then if we watch that dark structure after you can see how it's uh, boosted, uh, enhanced it quite significantly. So we've uh, uh, brought that back um, and made it look really good. And there we have the completed image. So we've combined the O3, the S2, and the H alpha. We've created a luminance channel and we've produced this uh, nice Hubble palette uh, image that we have here of NGC 7822. All right, so hopefully this was uh, informative and helpful in terms of processing a uh, Hubble palette image in PixInsight. Um, if you liked what you saw, um, please subscribe, please like, um, would appreciate that. And thank you to all the subscribers uh, that I currently have, um, all the new subscribers, welcome. And uh, we'll continue to... Uh, uh, do some videos here that we can uh, learn more about PixInsight and also uh, a little more about uh, the, uh, the hobby and uh, what's going on within it. Okay, so thanks for watching and clear skies everyone. We'll see you in the next video.